everyone, it's Ruby here and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Now in today's video, I know, I am finally reviewing Rihanna's makeup line, Fenty Beauty. I know I'm late to this, but I really wanted to take a step back and actually give these products a fair go. I wanted to take my time reviewing each individual product. I wanted to use them together and I also wanted to use them with some of my favorite products that I personally use on a daily basis just to see how they truly perform. So I personally have quite dry skin and it's also acne prone as well which makes it very difficult when picking out skincare and makeup products. I want my foundation to be full coverage so it can hide my imperfections. I also need it to be quite forgiving on my textured skin and I also want it to be quite lightweight and airy as well. So this foundation claims to be all that. So I can't wait to share with you my thoughts and how it wore on my acne prone dry skin type. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the Rihanna Fenty Beauty makeup line with Kendo, then please keep on watching. Right, so I wanted to give you guys a closer look at my skin so you can see that at the moment it is quite problematic. So I feel like this is the perfect time to put a full coverage or medium to full coverage foundation through its paces. But before we do that, let's run through the primer. So this is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. Straight off the bat, I definitely feel like this primer is geared towards those who have an oily skin type. This primer is oil free and it also has a multitude of other claims. It allegedly absorbs shine without feeling dry or chalky. It claims to blur the skin, smooth the look of pores and also even out skin tone and texture. This does come in a clear glass packaging that's slightly frosted and the actual product is a universal Invisi Pink technology. So it's supposed to, you know, go on pink and even out your skin tone and also texture. Now this primer is a silicone or dimethicone primer. And this ingredient is known to give foundations and primers that slippy feel. It's also responsible for giving the skin that blurred look as it's supposed to fill in textured skin like enlarged pores and also fine lines. As a drier skin type, this isn't a formulation that I would gravitate towards. So I am only applying this primer to one side of my face, which is my left hand side and your right hand side. Now this primer does feel smooth on certain areas, but areas where I have dryness, it is kind of collecting and balling up. Now on the other side of my face, I will be using a primer that is, I guess, geared towards drier skin types. This is the Smashbox Hydrating Primer. And I am using two different primers just to see how the foundation performs. Now onto foundation, this is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Now one thing you need to know about this foundation is that it dries a lot darker than initially swatched. Now as you can see, the consistency or the formulation of this foundation is quite liquidy and runny. Because of the consistency of this foundation, it does go on quite thin, but there are a few things that you need to keep in mind when applying this to your skin. When using a brush, you want to opt for a softer, more flexible buffing brush. Tight, firmly soft packed brushes tend to leave streak marks with this foundation. So if you can find a buffing brush that's quite flexible and moves with your skin, then this is the best option for you. Now you also need to work in sections because this product does dry down really, really quickly. As a drier skin type, I felt like I did not have time on my side because as soon as I popped on this foundation, I can feel it getting harder and harder to blend out. If you do wish to achieve that full coverage look, I find that it's easier to build this foundation using a brush. This is the 3D HD Kabuki brush by Sigma. And I'll leave a code for this brush up on the screen right now. Because this brush essentially has two sides, you can use one side to apply product and the other side to buff it out. When it comes to building coverage, I much prefer using a brush opposed to a sponge. And as you can see, it has given me a full flawless coverage and I'm actually really happy with this. Now I'm going to show you how the foundation applies using the Fenty Beauty sponge. First of all, I have to say that this particular sponge is comparable to the original Beauty Blender. The way it feels when it's dry, when it's wet, and the way that it bounces off your skin, it is comparable but not identical. Now I'm using the flat side of the sponge to apply the foundation onto my skin in sections. Now as you can see, I am struggling to build coverage using this sponge. 
I think because of the consistency of this foundation, it's like the sponge is either absorbing the product or just shearing it out way too much. So I did end up having to use more product, more pumps of foundation compared to the other side, just to build the same sort of coverage and finish. It definitely took a lot longer for me to pop on my foundation using a sponge compared to the brush. Now this foundation has completely dried down, so let's move on to reviewing some of the other products. So I ended up selecting the Matchstick Trio in the shade Medium, and also a single Matchstick in the shade Confetti. These Matchstick Trios come in four sets containing three shades, which is your concealing, highlighting, and contouring shade. There's 7.1 grams of product in each Matchstick, and whether you consider this to be worth it or a ripoff, I mean, that is completely subjective. One thing I have to say is that I am super impressed with the way that the contour stick just glides over the skin. I find that this is a really good everyday contour and even though I picked up the medium set or the medium trio, this contour stick, it just goes really well with my skin tone. You can easily create like a super you can easily create a chiseled look using this contour stick. And I like to use a brush to blend it out because I find that I'm not losing the pigment. I did struggle to blend my contour out using the Fenty Beauty sponge. I just found that it left the contour really patchy and it lifted my foundation. So all of my blemishes and my pigmentation were exposed. Even though I spent so much time covering all my flaws, I just feel like the sponge just didn't work for me. So what I'm doing now is I'm reapplying my contour and blending it out using one of my favorite contour brushes. And now I'm just reapplying my foundation to conceal my spots and my blemishes. Now you've seen how the contour matchstick has worked and applied on my skin. Let's move on to the concealer matchstick. When I swatched this on the back of my hand in the store, I noticed that the coverage wasn't quite there, so I opted for a darker shade just so I wouldn't have a gray hue underneath my eye. Now, because this concealer is lacking in coverage, I am using quite a generous amount under each eye. Just like we did with the foundation, I will be using a brush on one side and a sponge on the other. So this is my favorite brush for blending out concealers and it's having a hard time blending this particular concealer out. I feel like it's clinging onto my skin and it doesn't wanna blend using a brush. However, this sponge has actually come through and saved my concealer because on the left hand side, which is your right, it's actually doing a better job in blending it out. It's not clinging as much. So as you can see, there is less coverage, but the textural issues aren't there. This is one product that I absolutely disliked. It's the highlighting matchstick. I find that it clings to my skin and it does not budge. It also is very difficult to blend out and I would recommend using a finger. If you've got textural issues, I would avoid using this on my cheeks altogether. Now let's move on to the Invisi Matte Blotting Powder. It claims to be completely traceless against all skin tones. I quite like this powder. I think it is very forgiving on textured skin. It gives the skin a really nice blurring effect. And as you can see, it looks much more smoother compared to when I just had the foundation on. Let's move on to the powder highlighter duo. This is the Killer Watt Freestyle Highlighting Duo in the shade Mean Money and Hustler Baby. The stronger highlight is spot on. I absolutely adore this on the cheeks and also for the eyes as well. But the more subtle highlight, it doesn't really do it for me. It just addresses textural issues on the skin and it kind of just looks like powder sitting on top of the skin and that's about it. Let's move on to the lips and there is only one product in the Fenty Beauty range at the moment, which is the Gloss Bomb. Now I'm using this lip liner because I feel like it complements the gloss bomb so well. Now this is a very safe shade by Rihanna and it's a very universally flattering lip gloss. Now I am obsessed with this lip gloss. This is like one of my everyday products because as you can see it gives the lips a really nice wet look. The formulation is one of my favorites. It isn't sticky. It isn't like super heavy on the lips either. It just feels really lovely on your lips. I personally think that the Smashbox primer outperformed the Fenty Beauty primer. I stand by what I said at the beginning of the video that this line is geared towards those with an oilier skin type. If you have a look at the left hand side of my face, which is your right hand side, 
you will see that there's a lot of texture. And that's because I use the Fenty Beauty Primer. And this is definitely geared towards those who have an oilier skin type. Instead of blurring my imperfections, I find that this primer actually enhanced all the textural issues on my face. I was very disappointed with the concealer and also the highlighter matchsticks. If you do have dry skin, I would just recommend going for the single matchstick, which is the contour shade. It's disappointing because the highlighting shades are absolutely gorgeous, but the formulation just isn't there. And that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed my review on Rihanna's makeup line, Fenty Beauty. For my lovely viewers who have made it this far into the video, I have a little surprise for you all. I consider myself so, so lucky to have such wonderful and supportive viewers and subscribers like yourselves. You guys are beyond amazing. So all the products that I used in today's video were actually gifted to me by a PR company here in Australia. So I thought I'd go out to Sephora and literally buy one of everything that I featured in today's video to give away to one of you guys. I would be breaching YouTube guidelines if I was to host a giveaway on my channel. So if you head over to my Instagram at rubigalani, I will leave my handles up on the screen and also down below in the description box, you will see all the terms and conditions for you to enter. This giveaway is open worldwide. I just want whoever wins this to enjoy all of Fenty Beauty. Um, I will be going out and you know getting you a foundation. So be sure to head into Sephora and get yourself matched because I will be going in there and buying you a foundation myself with my own moolah. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to chatting to you all in my next video. I love you guys, bye.